Well, good morning again. Um, we are going to, what is the Zoom number three? We're gonna get into a couple of topics today. Um, and I will be sharing the screen for the most of the time. Um, all right, so let's check out. We looked at um, this particular item, the Sunshine State, and then this morning again, like I told everybody I sent you guys, uh, Sunshine State information or Florida information um, mm -hmm. via email that I had done. I'm just doing like a Zoom without anybody in there so they can see exactly what um, the article's about or the video is about. But today we're going to look real quick at context clues, okay? So we're gonna see a little video here and I'll stop it as context we go. Context refers to the other words and sentences or let me review it. So you guys can see this, correct? Yes. Yeah. All right. So, um, again, a good teacher doesn't create all their own content. I use other teachers' content. So I hope uh, you find that to be a little funny, maybe even uh, work. I like to work smarter, not harder. So we're going to look at this, uh, the several types of context clues, and then do a little practice and then look at a preview, a, an article or several articles, kind of a theme of articles that we are looking in American government, okay? Let's roll. In a conversation where you have no idea what the other person is saying. Maybe it's the person at the car repair place using words like carburetor or camshaft. You just nod your head and wait for the price. Or maybe you find yourself in a football huddle and Peyton Manning is saying things like bootleg and nickelback. Bootleg and nickelback? Is he talking about smuggling alcohol and rock bands? No. That seems weird when there's a game on the line. Maybe you're taking a test and you're supposed to analyze a reading passage, but there's this word that might as well be in Klingon. You have no access to a dictionary. What do you do? Well, we're not going to teach you car terminology. And if Peyton Manning is yelling at you, you're, you're on your own. But we can work on that last situation. It's all about determining the meaning of the word by using context. Context refers to the other words and sentences around the word in question. So whether you're reading an article or even a conversation with somebody, and even learning a new language, you want to look at the other words around that kind of question mark word or that unknown word or phrase, okay? And that should help you. This is a test taking skill that I think is uh, almost as important as building your vocabulary because uh, you'll be able to find those mystery words and be able to at least get a general sense of what that particular word is about. There are several great methods for using context to figure out what words mean. The first is to look and see if the definition of the word is right there. This can also be a restating of the word. Consider this sentence. While planning the party, Susan was prudent with the guest list, acting with great caution and care not to invite anyone with whom she wouldn't want to jump around in a bounce house. What does prudent mean? So that mystery word is prudent. We can, if you already know what that means, awesome. If you didn't, we could call it any word, it's the mystery word, and we can actually blank that out. And with the rest of the sentence, um, we can really understand it because it's, it's almost defined. In this sentence, the definition of the word is right there. Who is being prudent? Susan. With what? The guest list. You don't need to know what prudent means to figure that out. How else is Susan's behavior with the guest list described? She's acting with great caution and care. So that's the key so right there. So what's the definition of prudent? Acting with great caution, caution and care. care. Yeah. Other times you'll see examples that help explain the word in question. This is very similar to finding the definition. Look at this sentence. Devin procrastinated to avoid his homework all day, watching TV, playing video games, and even writing thank you cards to his grandparents. So again, if you don't know, or if you do know the word procrastinate, that's gonna be a mystery word. But if, if it was completely blanked out and it says Devin blank to avoid, he, so he did something to avoid his uh, homework all day long. And then there's examples. He watched TV, played video games, and then even wrote 
thank you cards to his grandparents. So he's doing everything he can to what? Not do his homework. Homework. Uh, awesome. What does procrastinate mean? This time, it's not defined elsewhere in the sentence, but we do have examples of what it means. We know that watching TV, playing video games, and writing thank you cards are all forms of procrastination. If Devin should be doing his homework, but he's doing these other things instead, then procrastination must mean delaying or putting off. Now those examples helped us figure it out. Maybe you're thinking, those are two methods, but I want more. Okay. Sometimes you'll see a synonym or antonym nearby. A synonym is another word that means the same thing. An antonym is a word that means the opposite. Oh, and you don't even need to know what synonym and antonym mean to use this method. Let's look at some examples. Here's our first one. Mark wanted to impress his date with the dinner he prepared, but the massive ice sculpture centerpiece he made with a chainsaw between courses was just superfluous, extra, and unnecessary. And that's a word we don't see all the time. If you know it, awesome. If you don't, it means extra and unnecessary. Okay, we're using the system of or a series of synonyms to go that, okay, if he's, if he's on his first date here with his girl and he's got a <laughs> massive ice sculpture as a centerpiece before their dinner, that's a little much, don't you think? I mean, it's a little overboard. This is not a cruise ship, okay? Wow, Mark, A for effort. But what does superfluous mean? There are two synonyms right there, extra and unnecessary. And guess what? That's the meaning of superfluous. Here's another. Priscilla is so humble and modest that she could never be called haughty. And haughty is our mystery word. Again, if you know it, cool, if you don't, we can, through the rest of this sentence, know that haughty means what? Prideful. It does mean prideful, but we'll use the words in the sentence, humble and modest. So it's, it would be the antonym of it, okay? Oh, uh, yeah. This haughty. Uh, yeah. Again, we have two uh, other adjectives, humble and modest. But you have that never the right there. Priscilla could never be called haughty. Why? because she's humble and modest. This and that's a word you don't see all the time, but that's, again, this is test taking skills, you know, 101, where uh, we are really focusing on doing the best we can to, um, to understand the difference here. I'm just gonna stop sharing just real quick to see if anybody is in line and we're not. So we need to get a, a, a better showing, I think. All right. So we're going back to this. So when you see something that is Priscilla is A, B, and C, and then, but she could never be the mystery word, it would be the opposite or what we call antonym of haughty. Oh. Yeah. Let's try and get that going. We have antonyms. So haughty is the opposite of humble and modest. Therefore, it means arrogant and pretentious. We've looked at some awesome methods for using context to determine the meaning of words. How about one more? Let's do one more. Sometimes you can use substitution to figure out a word. This involves swapping out the word you don't know for one you do know until it makes sense in context. I like this one a lot. Here's a sentence. As you might expect, the acid that burned a hole in the table also has deleterious fumes. Now deleterious, I mean, you guys use that every day, correct? No. No, never, ever. So that's the- No, mystery. not really. You could, you, could, you could literally just put um, question mark, question mark, question mark, has blank fumes, all right? We know that if something is super acidic and it's burning a hole through the table, what are the fumes? Are they good or bad? Bad. Probably bad, probably harmful, probably um, detrimental to the actual uh, table itself. Okay, what does that word deleterious mean? It's used as an adjective to describe the fumes, but we don't have any synonyms or antonyms, and there isn't a definition or any examples in the sentence. Let's try substitution. What about pleasant? Would that make sense in context? Uh, as you might expect, no. the acid that burned a hole in the table also has pleasant fumes. Hmm. No, burning a hole in the table is bad. Pleasant fumes are good. We wouldn't connect those two things, would mm -hmm. we? That's using context. 
So it's probably bad. What about horrible? As you might expect, the acid that burned a hole in the table also has horrible fumes. Okay, that's that's cool. what I would go. I would go with horrible. Yes, sir. The acid burned a hole in the table. So the fumes are also probably causing harm, right? What about harmful? As you might expect, that works with the me acid too. that burned a hole in the table also mm. has harmful fumes. That's it. That makes sense in context. And deleterious does mean harmful. We learned how to use context to determine the meaning of words. We explored several methods for this. First, we looked for the definition of the word in the sentence. We then looked for examples in the sentence that may help define the word. When a definition of some sort isn't present, we looked for synonyms or antonyms to offer clues for us. Finally, we tried substitution. This involves choosing a familiar word that maintains the original meaning of the sentence. Of course, we weren't able to help with auto shop All right, so what, I, what I'm gonna show you, I'm going to give you this um, a document um, on, your, on this next email, okay? So you'll have, con I call these cheat sheets. So when you're using or doing context clues, you can search for context clues or these different sections, okay? on the IXL and use them for practice. So let's look at some of them. Again, context clues are hints found in the sentence, paragraph, or passage that a reader can use to understand the meaning of new or unfamiliar words. Learning the meaning of a word through its use in a sentence or paragraph is the most practical way to build vocabulary, since the dictionary is not always available when a reader encounters an unknown word. A reader must be aware that many words have several possible meanings only by, me only, only by being sensitive to the circumstances in which a word is used can the reader decide upon an appropriate definition to fit the context. A reader should rely on context clues when an obvious clue to meaning is provided or when only a general sense of the meaning is needed for the reader's purposes. Context clues should not be relied upon when a precise meaning is required, when the clues suggest several possible definitions, when the nearby words are unfamiliar, and when unknown, the unknown word is a common one that will uh, be needed again. In these cases, a dictionary should be consulted. So that's just a kind of a blurb. First one definition, we talked about that. Okay, and we'll just look at one in each one. His emancipation, uh, emaciation, that is, his skeleton-like appearance, uh, appearance was frightening to see. So you can know that literally skeleton-like appearance is the definition of emaciation, all right? Uh, then your examples, we'll look at number one here. Uh, we're gonna use examples. Uh, I can't even say that, Pis piscatorial, piscatorial creatures such as a flounder, salmon, and trout live in the coldest parts of the ocean. Piscatorial obviously means, I mean, you have a list of what? Fish. Yeah, yeah like salmon and trout. Salmon. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to look at uh, a synonymous statement. This are, these are using words that are or do have similar or the same meaning, uh, meaning, excuse me. <coughs> Flooded with spotlights, the focus of all, all attention, the new Miss America began her year-long reign. She was the sinosure of all uh, eyes for the rest of the evening. Sinosure means focus of the attention, okay? So they literally had that there, okay? Then we have a contrast or what we could call an antonym clue. When the light brightens, the pupils of the eyes contr contract. However, when it grows darker, they dilate. So when light brightens, so when you see lights, your pupils get smaller, contract. However, this is the key. When you see words like however, but differently, that's gonna be that uh, antonym clue. And when it grows darker, they dilate, which means- They dilate. It, what's that mean? Get bigger or smaller? Um, get smaller. So let's look again. When the light brightens, the pupil of the eyes contract, which means what we know contract means to get what? Um, that means to get smaller, right? Yes. So that means to get smaller. 
So then he, he or she transitions from however, when it, grow, when it grows darker, they dilate, which means to get bigger or smaller if it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. To get bigger, guys. So yeah, when you're, I, you kind of think of your pupils in the sunlight during the day are very small, they don't need to be big, and at night they get huge. Uh, and then mood and tone, okay? The author sets a mood and the meaning uh, of the unknown word must harmonize with the mood, okay? So this word, the lugubrious, lugubrious wails of the gypsies matched the dreary whistling of the wind in all but deserted cemetery. So that particular word, which means sorrowful, fits the mood. Again, if you were gonna switch that out and put happy, it doesn't make any sense because the gypsy, gypsy, gypsies would be uh, it's the, sort of that negative, okay? And then experience. Sometimes a reader uh, knows from the experience of how people and things act in a given situation, the knowledge provides a clue in the meaning of the word. So during those first bewildered weeks, the thoughts of a college freshman drift back to high school where he was in, <clears throat> knew everyone and felt at home. A feeling of nostalgia sweeps over him. So that's sort of being defined, but also um, it's, it's re really a good experience. If you know how that feels, you're, you're moving either from high school to uh, middle school to high school or high school to college. You used to be the big man on campus, and now you're thinking back, oh, man, now, now I'm not, and I don't know anyone, okay? Um, so I'll print these guys out for you, um, or actually, I actually downloaded it, so I'll set it as an attachment, okay? Um, so let's practice, and again, we're at, I'm literally at third grade, so these should be fairly easy, and I'm going down to vocabulary, building your vocabulary. And there are several, several sections here. Context clues, we got determining the meaning of the words using synonym, uh, using context to identify the meaning of the word. And the new one is use academic vocabulary in context. So we'll do all three, um, a couple from each, uh, and then move on. So you guys will hopefully help me out with that. If it pops up, there we go. You can see this, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lucy was feeling cheerful. Again, pretend we don't know this word. As she got up and went downstairs, she was happy because she was going on to the water park that day. So we kind of select the synonym of the word in bold. So Lucy was feeling cheerful as she got up and went downstairs. She was happy because she was going to the water park that day. Yep. Which, what do you guys think? What word can we select that means cheerful? Let's pick happy. Yeah. That's what I'm, I would go with happy too. Let's see, I mean, we could be wrong and that's totally okay. We could, um, uh, and then we can fix those skills, but we are. That's right. Correcto. Okay. I like that. And then, then we want to, that we use the meaning of cheerful. We know what that means. Uh, or we use the meaning, the synonymous meaning of happy and cheerful. And we want to um, use the cinnamon that will, uh, synonym, not cinnamon, synonym to help you determine the meaning. So cheerful is sick or well. Curious um, and eager or content and full of joy? I go with content or full of joy. Yeah. And the easy way to do this second part of the first question is if you wanted to like um, substitute. So you could write or just in your mind go, Lucy was feeling sick or unwell as she got up and went downstairs. And you're like, okay, that sentence makes sense. Then the next sentence, she was happy because she was going to a water park. So if you're feeling sick and unwell, how can you be happy? You would be not happy, correct? So that would be, uh, yeah. and then you could do the process of elimination on that. Terrific. All right, let's do. Terrific goal. Yes, terrific. 
Last night, my younger brother whined all through dinner. When mom asked him to finish his carrots, he complained even more. Oh, let's pick complained. Uh, We're doing complained, okay? Right. Complained and whined. Well, Terrific. That was terrific. Now we're going to do the same idea here. What does that word whined and complain mean? Is it continue uh, or won't stop? Uh, drank and ate? and then grumbled or cried. Hmm. Uh. If you whined. What do you guys think? So I'll just substitute these in here. Last night, my brother continued or wouldn't stop all through dinner. When mom asked him to finish his carrots, he complained even more. That sort of doesn't really make sense. And then last night, my brother ate and, uh, sorry, drank it. Yeah, I go, with a, I go with a third one. Okay, let, I'm just going to finish the second one. All through dinner, when mom asked him to finish his carrots, he complained. So if he ate and drank, why would he complain? That's a that's one to slip you up, but the best, again, we always want to look at the best answer to the particular question. There's always going to be a best correct answer. Wonderful. All right, let's do another one. Cora is studying for the big math exam on Tuesday. She loves math and is sure she'll do well on the test. What do we think? Well, let's see, exam's already in bold. So the exam, and we're looking for the word, that means the same or synonym. So that's going right. to be. Right. Nice. Okay. So we're, looking, we're looking for a synonym to turn the, determine the meaning. So Cora, Cora is studying for a big math blank on Tuesday. Is it questions to see someone? to see what someone knows, answers to hard questions, classes that teach people new things. Let's see. Um, I'd go with the first one. Let's Me do the too. first one, let's see. Super duper, aren't they nice to say we're super? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go back and we're gonna go to the next section of context clue. You can also search context clue like this. And you can get all the grades right there if you want. Well, okay. that's, that's cool. So you can search any topic as well. Uh, all right, let's use these um, and we'll do a couple of these. So basically we're going to read this paragraph really quickly and try and understand which Again, pretend we don't know this word. And we can use substitution, but also the context clues. Coral reefs are home to a variety of animals. For instance, more than 4,000 kinds of fish, sea stars, crabs, and sharks can be found around reefs. Many people depend on these sea creatures for food. People also depend on reefs to block waves from hitting the land during large storms. If a reef is damaged, it can rebuild over time. However, it can take hundreds of years for a reef to come back to life. Because of this, we should uh, do all that we can to protect our reefs. Again, and we can substitute these, but coral reefs are home to a variety of animals. And we are going to either know that variety means a large cage. What do we think, yes or no? A variety. Can we say coral reefs are home to a large cage of animals? That doesn't really make sense, does it? It can be. It a, can. A collection of different things. A group of things that are alike or a small family of animals. Oh, now it's getting tricky. So let's look. Uh, coral reef are home to a variety. So we want to know that variety of animals. Is that a small family? If you're part of a family, you're probably the same species. So we got to X that out. 
a large cage. There is no cage. We're not talking about a cage. Now, no, it can't be that. Between different or group of things that are alike. So I go with a third one. Going with a third one. Let's see if we can actually, before we answer that, look at some of the other parts here. So we're looking at coral reefs are home to a variety, or let's say if it's a collection of different things. Now we have 4,000 kinds of fish, sea stars, crabs, sharks, uh, and then we have sea creatures, people who eat those sea creatures, um, and things like that. So are they groups of things that are alike or different? Um, is, a crab, is a crab the same as a fish? Well, they well a fish doesn't have claws, but only a crab does. Yeah, and sea stars are they exactly the same as sharks? They're different. Yeah, so I'm gonna say that the third one is one that's to slip you up, because you're thinking sea creatures. They're pretty much all alike. I think. Yeah, but they have different. But they have different names. Yes, sir, and different. They are different species and types of animals. Let's see if we get it right. We could get it wrong. Nope, we're brilliant. So, all right, so now we're looking at uh, selecting, selecting the text that indicate that a collection of different things. So let's see a collection of different things. I think we used it earlier, did we? I think it's that. Oh, we got it, duh. You got it. Got it, buddy. All right, let's do this other one on rotate. Wild birds often gather together in groups or flocks. One reason for this is to help the birds save energy. When birds fly together in a V shape, for example, the birds in the back don't hit as much wind as others. This means they don't have to work as hard at flying. During long flights, the birds will often rotate where they are in the V by taking turns leading and following, all the birds are able to get some rest. Oh. So rotate, we can switch rotate. The birds will often blank where they um, are. I was, lose yeah. track, is it lose track of? I think change places. So it's it might be, be change places. Is it keep the same? No. No. Keep track of? No. no, that's to slip you up. I think you're right that it is when you rotate something, you are um, changing places. You got it. Okay, so we are supposed to look at the section of the text that helps us define rotate. How about that one? Yeah, that's got to be it. Correcto. All right, so I'm going back to third, and I'm going to go to this last section that just got included. Uh, vocabulary building, we're looking at using academic vocabulary in context. Let's see if we can do that. As Again, as you go through this, we want to practice on the lower levels, and you might practice at six or eight, and then move to, um, and you might move to, uh, uh, the high school level, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh. All right, so, all right, let's look at this. Most other children, and are, we're going to look at, look at the word required in the passage, we're seeing it, uh -huh. and we're going to ident uh, identify the meaning, okay, based on these, okay? Most of the other children at camp only wanted to hike and swim, but Ingrid was tired of hiking and swimming. She needed a new hobby. Ingrid wondered what she could do. Play chess. chess uh, play chess? Chess required two players. Ingrid asked Walt if he wanted to learn, but Walt did not. Ingrid couldn't play alone, so chess was out. Okay, so chess required. Did it help? Chess helped? Two players, chept, uh, chess bothered two players, or chess needs two players? Um, I 
What do you think? Um, Did it? Chess helps two players, bothers two players, or needs two players? What do you guys think? If I require you to wear glasses, or nowadays I require you to wear a mask, do I, do I help you wear a mask? Does it mean that I, or bother you, or is it a need that you need to wear the, the mask? Uh, help. It does help. That's the one to slip you up. But a better definition of a requirement. Yeah, need. Yeah, of course. Okay. All right. Again, these aren't easy. Even the third grade level, they're not easy. So the word require does mean need. What does every sandwich require? A spoon, bread, or butter? What do you need on a, on a sandwich? Or what does a sandwich require? Bread. Definitely bread. You could say butter if you had a butter sandwich, but the best is every, that sound nice. every, every single sandwich I've ever had has bread on it. It doesn't have a spoon in it. You might use a spoon to spread the butter. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, so next one. Which sentence uses required correctly? To stay healthy, our dogs require ex exercise every day. My uncle would require in a year to help watch the dogs. When we got our dogs, I promise I would require them. Again, we can substitute, remember need. Let's say, let's, let's substitute need. To stay healthy, our dogs need exercise every day. My uncle will need in a year to help watch the dogs. That sounds funny, doesn't it? When we got our dogs, I promise I would need them. Which one does not sound funny? Um, I go with the first one. Let's do it. Let's see. Are we geniuses? Correcto. Correcto. We are geniuses. Yes. Uh, we'll start with reading, Miss Cottontail said. She asked Benny to read aloud. No, I don't know how, Benny no. admitted quietly. Miss Cottontail <clears throat> gave him a special alphabet book for beginners. Don't worry, Benny. You'll learn, Miss Cottontail said. We will help you. So admitted. Benny admitted quietly. He tells someone something exciting, says something you don't want to, or makes something harder to do. What's it mean when you admit something? Is it telling somebody something exciting? Is it saying something you don't want to tell them? Or is it making something harder to do to them or for them? What's it mean to admit, admit to something? So if I said to you, and I admit that I can't swim, would that be easier for me to say because we live in Florida? Or would that be hard for me to say? Like I'm a grown man, you know, 30, 33 years old and I can't swim. Is that easier for me to say or hard? Me hard. Okay, so it's something I don't want to tell you. Like yeah. so if I admit it, it's something I, I don't want to tell you. The next one. Okay, the word admit means say something that you don't want to. What might a person admit? That she won a contest, failed a test, or finished her homework. So you gotta think, is this positive or negative, positive or negative, positive or negative? So if you won a contest, is it positive or negative? Awesome. Positive. Awesome. If you failed a test, positive or negative? Negative. And if you finished negative. her if you finished your homework, is that positive or negative? Positive. Yes. Okay, so positive, positive, negative. So if we know that saying something that you don't want to do is probably a negative thing, it is admitting 
that you wouldn't ad have to admit that you won a contest. You'd be excited about it, or you wouldn't have to admit you did your homework. You would, you'd be excited that you did it. You, however, when you fail a test, you're like, dang it, I failed that test. Uh, like my driving test. I failed my first driving test. Oh. But since then I'm gold. <laughs> Which sentence uses admit correctly? The neighbors admitted David for telling the truth. The neighbors admitted to $10 to repair the broken window or David finally admitted that he broke the neighbor's window. Um, what would be hard to say? Oh it's going to be this one, guys. David finally admitted that he broke the neighbor's window. Okay. Yeah, I go with the third one. All right. Excellent day. So I will be sending both this context clue, and I, if I can extract this one as well, I'm gonna to try to uh, download that and give that to you as well, another context clue, cheat sheet, okay? Let's uh -huh. look, I want to change transitions here, and we're going to, in the next two days, look at how um, the three branches of government work, mm -hmm. which is, Super fun, right? Yeah. Yes. It is pretty interesting stuff. Let's see if this can load. The zoom always slows everything down. So this is a basic overview of, again, this is kids education, but you wanna learn a basic overview of the three branches of government. I'm gonna send you guys an article about the three grant, uh, uh, grant <laughs> branches branches of, of government and how they interact and then information about each one. So it's kind of be like a, like a text set, I guess you'd call it. Okay. So we want to preview this information by checking out this um, little video. Welcome to Kids Academy. Yay. Hi, boys and girls. Do you know how laws are made? There are three branches of government in the United States. How many? Three. Three. Good, good. Three. Each branch has a special responsibility in the lawmaking process. Legislative, executive, judicial. Um, so legislative, do we know who those are called? Lawmakers. Yeah, lawmakers, okay. How many are Oh my gosh. Do we know how many there are? Um. This includes two houses. One of Cong Congress is the whole entire legislative. And then we have the House of Representatives and then also the Senate. How many senators do we have? Oh, that's tricky. Um, I, two, right? Two per state. So we end up having 100. Okay. Cool. And then how many uh, congressmen and women? How many congressmen? Um, let's see. It varies by state, so I'm not sure. It does vary by state. Okay. And I believe it's 435. I'm checking real quick. Uh, House of Reps. I don't want to give you any. Somebody's got puppies. Yeah, that's me. So there are four, <laughs> there are 435 um, members of the House of Representatives, okay? So all in all, there's 535 in the legislative branch. What's the executive branch or who runs that? Uh, who do we think runs that? You can tell by this. This is actually the Capitol building where the legislative branch meets. That's where all Congress and the House meets. This building is famous building. Do we know what it is? 1300 Pennsylvania Street. This is, the White House. this is the White House. So who, who runs the White House or who lives there? Trump. Yeah, so the president, okay? 
right now, Donald J. Trump. What about the judi judicial? This is the, this is actually a, the Supreme Court building. Yeah. It is the nine justices who do that, but we'll get into this. This is just a brief, uh, brief, brief overview. Mm -hmm. The legislative branch makes the laws. The United States Congress runs the legislative branch. Congress members introduce bills, which are ideas for new laws. Got ideas. A bill cannot become a law until it is approved by the executive branch. The President of the United States is the leader of the executive branch. The President can approve or veto a bill. When a bill is vetoed, it is rejected. When the President signs a bill, it becomes a law. The executive branch also enforces laws to make sure that people follow them. The judicial branch is made up of courts and judges. The U.S. Supreme Court is the highest court in the judicial branch. Members of the judicial branch review laws to make sure they are fair. It's trivia time. Yay! Let's see what you know about the three branches of government. Question one. Which branch of the United States government is responsible for making laws? Which one makes A, it? The judicial branch. B. The legislative branch. Which C, one is it, guys? The executive branch. If you need I would say I say B. B. Go back and the lesson again if you need more help. The answer is B, the legislative. Oh. Yes. Great job. It. Question two. Uh, Who is the leader of the executive branch? Which one A, is the leader? The president. B, the Supreme Court. C. Which one Congress. is it? The president. A, the baby. The answer is A. The President of the United States is the leader of the executive branch. The executive branch enforces laws to make sure that people follow them. Let's try one more. Question, Question three. three. Who reviews laws in the judicial branch? A. Congress members. B. American citizens. C. Court judges. Uh, yes. The answer is C. The of judicial course. reviews laws to make sure they are fair. Of course. I knew that go. one. Thanks for watching. All right. So, okay. I'm going to stop the sharing. And then I'm also going to stop the recording.